There was a time when being a student of history would have consigned you to a life skulking about the stacks in some remote library, lifting big, dusty books and leafing through accounts of what happened a hundred years ago, 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. But today, it's only a point and click away, right from your home, right from your phone. And so many people have compared the current situation to what happened in 1918, the Spanish flu, without going just a few years later and seeing what happened afterward. You see, there was a discussion then as well. Many people have said that if only back then we had done what we are doing now, maybe so many might not have died. Well, that just means they don't understand history. Because they did. And there's newspapers to prove it. This is Minnesota. Public places ordered to close. October 12, 1918. Mayor issues order to prevent spread. Salt Lake City. Theaters, churches, schools of Utah close on account of flu. They did. It did no good. It did no good. Yet, only a matter of a couple of years later, we had the Roaring Twenties. Now, how could that have been? If everything the scaremongers are telling you is true, if we don't do this now and we don't do that now, we are consigning ourselves to decades of uh, recession, depression, and death, and it didn't happen then. Why would you believe it would happen now? It was only a couple of years and we saw the roaring 20s, but don't think there wasn't a group of people out there who wanted to take advantage of the fear and they actually got their way in Congress now this was something called the temperance movement without these people even understanding what the word temperance or moderation means at this time many people didn't even know how to read so even if they had a Bible, they wouldn't have known what to do with it. So those who could, those who had access to the hidden knowledge, told them what they should think, told them what they should feel, told them how they should vote. You see, this is the problem now. We haven't changed a bit. There are a couple of places, Sweden and Brazil, that have learned from history. And they've said, you know, this has come and this has gone before. And we're going to take some measured approach. It's why I'm so proud of the governor of Florida. And let me be very clear. If the CEO of McDonald's came out and said, you know what? I want to close all of my stores. Okay, wonderful. That's his choice. It's his business. But when the government says... You must close, even though 99% of your workforce is fine and ready to go to work. And then they say, you're going to do what we say, and then you're going to take a check from us to make up for it. That's plutocratic fascism. A lot of people say, you just want socialism. Oh, no, we skated past socialism a long time ago. That's way back in the rear view mirror right now. This is plutocratic Fascism, that means the tyranny of the rich. They're telling you what to do, and because they can cook up make-believe money, they're going to keep your bread and, bread. well, the bread part of the bread and circus is going. They've just altered the circuses a little bit. And this guy's being demonized all over the press, all over the media. Because he said he's not the type. He's literally doing the exact opposite of what a tyrant would do. And they're calling him 
a tyrant. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Tyrants order their people about as if they are sitting on a throne, ordained by God, wearing a crown, saying, as I believe it should be, so shall it be. And then sending men with guns to enforce it. That's our problem. I would not uh, begrudge any owner. Of, if you want to socially distance yourself, by all means, freedom of association, stay at home. Absolutely. I would never demean you for that. I would never castigate you for making your own choice. But give the rest of us the opportunity to make ours. And those of you out there like, well, the, your choices could make everybody sick or did it? That could have been the case at any time in the past. Go look at the numbers right now, naysayer. They're talking about 800,000. You know what? You're almost 1 60th of the way to H1N1 from 2009 and 10. Go to the CDC website. You know what? I'll even give you the link. First pinned comment. All you've got to do is scroll down. Click that link. April 2009 to April 2010, worldwide, 60 million cases of H1N1. Deaths of H1N1 and things that were related to it, somewhere between 151 and 400,000. 2009, 2010, not my make-believe numbers. That's from CDC. And you can read that for yourself. So yeah, in three months, you've made it almost 1 60th of the way there to that million cases number. Only 59 million more to go. And they're already saying the rate of infection worldwide is decreasing, that there's going to be a little spike here in the U.S., but overall, it's going away. And by fall, by summer, late summer, it's going to be winding up. And it's not even going to be anywhere near what happened just 10 years ago, much less the 50 million people that were killed by the H1N1 Spanish flu. And now people are telling lies about history, about what happened then. They tried. They ordered people not to spit in public. And you can find those, that's all over the place. Just look up images from, uh, just type in Spanish flu, search images, and you'll see there's all sorts of pictures. Do not spit, do not spit, do not spit. Literally ordering people not to spit in public. Closing all sorts of things, and it did no good. It went away on its own. That's another question people aren't asking. And I would like naysayer. I would like you to answer this for me. What did they do that got rid of the Spanish flu? There was no cure for it back then. What did they do in 2009, 2010? No cure then as well. And what are they doing? And most importantly, I want you to answer this question now. There's no cure for the coronavirus. It's a common cold. And there's no vaccine as of right now. So all these people going into the hospital, other than, other than the ones who are going on respirators, what are, the rest, what are they doing? Giving them fluids? Giving them rest? Maybe giving them a vitamin D shot? What are they doing that they couldn't be doing other than fluids, maybe? IV fluids to keep them hydrated. If they're having some kind of a problem keeping fluids down, drinking fluids, but giving IV fluids... that. They gave that to guys in the military all the time. Oh, and by the way, I'll leave with this. And this is probably going to be controversial, but such is life. This hydrochloroquine thing, all they're doing is trading white lives for black lives. And I know that's going to be a horrible, look, what are you saying? How can you say that? I'm reporting you right now. That, I'm sure there's somebody typing right now. That hydrochloroquine stockpile was meant to prevent the spread of malaria 
in Africa, Asia, and South America. And if you think these big drug companies that are getting all of this play now for giving away the stockpile are going to be all too fired up to replace it for free, think again. And when malaria hits, a real disease, a disease that's killed half of the people who have ever lived on the planet, provably billions have died from malaria. And that hydrochloroquine stockpile isn't there. You are going to see a mass wave of death go across Africa. It won't be from coronavirus. So, of course, it's not going to make the news. CNN is not going to report on it. MSNBC is not going to report on it. Fox isn't going to report on it. It's going to be a year from now. It might not even be that long when summer hits in the southern hemisphere in six months. They're going into winter now. But when they go back into summer next year and they don't have that hydrochloroquine and people start kicking over by the thousands from malaria, it's just trading one life for another. That's all this will have been. Like, share, subscribe.